Welcome, and it is game week. So we're off and rolling with Jacob Warren. I am Dave Hooker. It is the Vol Report with Jacob Warren, brought to you by Doctors Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn. And when it comes to comprehensive eye care, you just can't beat it in Knoxville. And they are local. I've had my eyes done. They're fantastic. I can see far. I can see close. I can see it all. And they can take care of you with that, with LASIK, cataract treatment options as well. Go to cctis.com or the link right below. It's game week, Jacob. Let's go. Let's go. Finally. <laughs> I mean, yes. Finally. I can't imagine how excited you are because I've heard it for 25 years. After a while, man, hitting your own dude, so your good. own teammate gets old. How quickly does it get old? Is it a week? Is it two weeks? When is it like, oh, I'm sick of hitting you, man. Yeah, I think more, I don't know. It's it's probably after about two weeks, you're kind of sick of it. At, at the beginning, you're still trying to figure each other out, you know, and you're trying to, you know, understand, you know, okay, well, wow, he's a little bit stronger than he was last time. You know I mean? Last time I put one against him last spring or whatever it may be. Or, um, but then by the end of it, you know I mean? We kind of figure each other out. He knows exactly kind of how I'm going to approach a block and I know exactly how he's going to try to beat the block. And so a lot of times you end up just kind of stalemate with each other and just be like, huh, cool. <laughs> be good on game day. Right. Like it, we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, man, it, it, it's nice to finally be looking at somebody else on film and, and uh, studying for, for other guys on different teams. Well, let's talk about what you saw on film brought to you by Dr. Campbell's Cunningham, Taylor and Han. And I would think that's a defensive front. That's pretty good. Virginia, returns pretty much their defensive line intact. Um, I know that's a benefit for them. Is it at all a benefit for you because you get to see what's really going to be on the field on Saturday in Nashville? Right. Yeah. That, that's kind of how I think of it is, is, you know, when you go against experienced guys, first of all, like I'm an experienced guy as well. Right. So um, not a big deal, right. That they've, that they've had a lot of snaps. Right. So, um, it's good for me because, yeah, I have so much film to be able to watch and look at and understand and to study and try to you know pick up on certain little things that they're doing and kind of get a feel for how they play and, and just the type of player that they are. Um, you're not really you're not going into it blind. Right. You're playing a young guy or um, even sometimes when you're playing guys that transfer into schools, and you don't have much much film of their of them in the actual system you're going to be playing them against. Um it can be a little more difficult, but yeah, having guys that are returning. Yeah, sure. We got a whole year of film and, and we've been studying and watching and trying to prepare for it. You have some pretty good edge rushers. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious. I, I don't think most people stare at the tight end. No offense during offensive plays. Most people are looking at the ball, but you're going to catch like 80 balls this year. So that's good. Right. Um, but most people don't stare at the tight end. How often like percentage wise between running routes, between run blocking and uh, pass protection, helping with an edge rusher. Yeah. Think of a percentage of that is Jacob's job. If you were to, if you were to tell somebody that that had no idea about your game, um, you know, I, I think I would say it kind of just depends on matchups, right? You, you, um, there's guys you go into the week feeling comfortable with as far as a tight end, or you know, whether I'm really skilled at pass blocking or not. Um, I'm lighter than most edge rushers, and I'm maybe you know that comes with a lot of power, a lot of strength that they have maybe an advantage over. Um, so, you you know, you wouldn't ask me to block a guy that's 290 pounds and, you know, super twitched up and, and is, he literally gets paid to rush the quarterback, right? That's all he does. So third down, like, you know, you kind of, you try to stay out of positions to put a, you know, put us in bad spots. Um, but, you know, we, you know, that's something that the tight end does at every single level of the game is, is help and pass protection. And you know, when a team does have a good edge rush, you can definitely, you know, get an advantage by, you know, maybe chipping them or, you know, just kind of slowing them down, getting in their way or, you know, releasing through their side of the ball just so that, you know, they have something else to kind of take their eyes off of the actual rush, whatever it may be. But there's a lot of different ways you can kind of help in, in that regard, um, not just blocking them straight up, right? And there'll be times when, you know, yeah, you are asked to kind of just bow up and go take one and, and uh, you know, hold up for the quarterback and, Obviously, that's something that we practice and something that we, we try to be really good at. Yep. Um, no doubt about it. Uh, the Vol Report brought to you by our friends at uh, Doctors Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn. So the season gets rolling. I've always thought, from my perspective in the media, 
it's nice to get in a rhythm because you guys have had off days. Well, at least from the media's perspective, they've had off days on Tuesdays, off days on Fridays, off days on Wednesdays. And I think your schedule is somewhat like that in that there's not the Monday through Saturday routine. How refreshing is it to get that in place? Yeah, that's something that I've been <clears throat> man living with for pretty much my whole life, right? It is just, you know, Monday I do this, Tuesday I do this. All right, now it's Wednesday. Now it's, you know, really starting to kind of get close. And then Thursday you're trying to start locking mentally and, you know, Friday trying to get your body right to go perform. And it, there's just there's this routine that you go through and this process that you go through every week. And um, it definitely is exciting to kind of get back to it, right? We've been off of it. And like you said, we off day here or every three days is an off day or you know some days it falls on a sunday some days it falls on a wednesday and you don't really know what day of the week it is right you're a little bit confused about what time of day it is and what week it is and what month it is and you know things are kind of just going by and um now you really kind of get to settle down and and lock into to just every day being you know one specific piece of the puzzle that's going to help you win on saturdays so let's say Jacob Warren comes in and they want to test how tough you are and you're, you're an underclassman or even a freshman, whenever that year was, they were like, Hey, let's see what this guy can do. And they really put you the ringer in preseason camp. So if that's a 10, now you're a proven commodity. So they backed it off a little bit. Where would you say kind of a scale of one to 10, as far as participation compared to previous years, man. And this is something that, I mean, my, might be shocking, I guess, but we're still repping, dude. Like, there's still, you know, plenty of reps for me to get, plenty wow. of reps for you know, even, other guys. So even you personally? Yeah. Okay. You know, there, there, there's times whenever they take care of us, right? Like, uh, we're going live bullets, right? Say we're going, uh, like, a scrimmage or something or full pad, full, you know, full tackle. There will be times whenever they're like, hey, like, you're going to chill this period or you're going to chill this, you know, just get a couple of racks and then you'll be done. We don't just want to limit Know, the opportunities, right? I'm going to have to play the game on Saturday. So there's always opportunity. And just me being out there, there's opportunity for injuries, there's opportunity for, you know, whatever it may be. But you're able to limit that just based on, you know, kind of rep counts and, and fatigue and all that stuff too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there, there's there's plenty of rest for me to get in fall camp. And I think that, you know, now that it's over, right, I appreciate that, um, yeah, I, I was asked to, to do a lot, right? I was asked to kind of go out there and really try to expand my – my conditioning and, and we call it, we say it our tank, right? You're trying to grow your tank every day. So that gas tank, when it comes game day is ready to roll, right? I'm not getting to the second quarter and I'm not already blown out because I didn't take any reps during fall camp. I think that's kind of the, the thought process you have on it. And we, we truly do play ourselves into shape, right? Just from the past few weeks of practice and being on tempo and going big play drives and, and going period to period where, you know, you're not getting much break. Um, it does help you build up that stamina and helps you prepare yourself for, for what you're going to face on game day. You'll also face Virginia's pass coverage and their linebackers and their secondary. And I want to get to that. But first, another you question, as it is the ball report brought to you by Dr. Campbell's Cunningham, Taylor and Han. Dr. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor and Han, local cataract and LASIK vision. Again, local. They care about you. I've had it. The personalized service and what they did for me as a patient was absolutely tremendous so jacob this is this is your last year and, and last year might have been your last year but you decided to come back right. physically 18 year old jacob warren standing next to how old do you know i'm 23 23 year old jacob warren how yeah. different physically those two dudes standing next to each other how different are those dudes I wish I could see it, man. I really do. I wish that I, I could have him standing right next to me, like in a mirror or something, and just be able to kind of, you know, judge and just see how far how far we've gotten. Um, it is pretty crazy, you know, to, just to think about the the transformation that I've made. And obviously, there's still a long way to go, right? Just in in the way your body looks and the way how strong you are and all this stuff and how muscular you are, all these things that you know are important to any young man, right? You want to look good. You want to look big and strong. Um, but man, just the growth that I've had over, you know past few years has been has been pretty crazy and i think that there's people i see that i haven't seen in quite a while you know maybe from the high school or, or uh, old coaches or whatever it may be and they're like oh my gosh like <laughs> you're a totally different dude like you just yeah you know, last time i saw you you were this little guy coming in and i wasn't little obviously i was still a big guy but i'm um, not nearly as, as as filled out as big as i am now um so yeah man it, it, it's different um i was Definitely very talented in my own regard whenever I was a skinny guy, but definitely happy to be where I'm at right now. Dimensions-wise, though, because I felt like mm -hmm. I, 
you know, I saw you a year apart. So I felt like you were an inch taller when I saw you at SEC Media Days opposed to when we got all this rolling um, yeah. March 2022. So you've, I'm sure you've grown a couple of inches in the time you've been at UT. How much more do you weigh? Can you give me an idea of dimensions? Yeah, so I think I, I was 6'5", six, 6'5", five, um, six, five and I don't know, three eighths or something like that, right? They do all the specific measurements. 6'5 and a half, right? And now I'm probably 6'6 six, six and a half, um, you know, maybe 6'6 six, six and, and again, three eighths, right? Probably grown about an inch. Um, but yeah, I think I, my first weigh-in whenever I got to Tennessee, I had just eaten the, like a big burrito from Chipotle because I wanted to be as, as heavy as possible. And I think I weighed in at like 208. What are you now? 235? Okay, okay. Let's play higher or lower. I'm gonna take I'm gonna make a real guess. I'm gonna make a real guess. Because right when I said that one, I felt felt pretty stupid. Yeah. I'm gonna put the over under at 247 and a half. Okay, that's not a bad line. Because if you were to ask me after fall camp practice, I was probably below that. But before fall camp practice, I'm in like 252. 253 around you there. You lose so low about four or five pounds during practice. At least, yeah, just water weight. Um, and then you'll be – like, it'd be – it's kind of crazy, actually. It's kind of funny how it works. Um, the tight ends work. We work a lot, right, and we we sweat a lot. And we're asked to do so much, so many things, run, block, you know, whatever, do all these things. Um, and we all are weighing in over 250, you know, 254, 255, 252. And then after practice, we weigh in and we're all at like 243, 245. And we're like, golly, like, how do we sweat so much? And it's just, that's just how it is, man. And, and it happens to everybody. It happens to everyone around the country. And we all just learn that all right, I just had to start drinking water and eating a lot of food. And you'll you'll be right, right back up to, you know, 253, 254 by the end of the day. Um, but, yeah, that's where I like to hang out, 253 around there. So – as as you look at Virginia's defense, we talked about how you can help in pass protection, but how can you help in the passing game? And you look at their uh, linebackers and secondary. Most oftentimes, I would think it's what maybe a strong side backer or safety lined up on you. What do you see out of your potential matchups when you watch the Cavs on film? I mean, really similar to to how a lot of people play play us in particular, but just play defense. I think you'd get a lot of similar structures, um, especially in kind of the ball we play around the SEC. Uh, a lot of defense are really similar, matched out by – generally matched out by like a nickel or, or a nickel meaning um, meaning a hybrid between a safety and a linebacker right. or maybe even a corner safety linebacker, just kind of a hybrid guy that's a little bit bigger than a, a corner, right, but a little bit smaller than a linebacker a little bit quicker, faster, better at covering. Um, so that's generally who who we're matched out by if it's, if it's you know, cover one or if it's man. Um, if it's zones, obviously you're dealing with anybody, right? You're dealing with backers, safeties, corners. Um, so, you know, it, it just kind of depends. I think, you know, you have a lot of different rules based on who's covering you and, and kind of where where the bodies are. And, and, you know, if this guy's matching me, that means it's this coverage. That means, yeah, I'm doing this. Like, you know, whatever it may be. There's a lot of different variation. And, and kind of how you know we play. So I'm um, just being able to be decisive and and you know play fast and be really good getting in out of my breaks and be physical at the top if somebody's trying to match me out. Those are the ways that, that I help the team, you know, on the perimeter, getting open and and you know catching the ball and, and maybe getting a first down or getting touched, whatever it may be. Uh, just kind of playing my part. Can you work with me on like an old man comparison for a second? Okay. okay. So Nebraska back in the day ran the wishbone. Okay, so yeah. that was tough to prepare for. Georgia Tech yeah. ran the option. That was tough to prepare for. You watched the Navy game yesterday? I, I did. So there you go. There's another example. Okay, so right. my argument, like with Notre Dame and with Virginia, is that there's yeah. a slight advantage because you're their first opponent, so they've had longer to look at it. If it happens in the middle of October, especially a non-conference mm -hmm. opponent – I'm not spending as many hours preparing for your all's offense, which is almost as unique as the offenses we were talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That makes sense. Um, I think that's a valid point. I think that, um, I don't know. So there's been, there was a couple of high school teams that we played against when I were, I was, I was in high school that ran triple option um, or like wing T style of offenses and, and, it's it's difficult right it's difficult to prepare for just because you're not used to seeing that you're not used to to the different things but just i mean it all boils down to understanding your keys and understanding what you're looking at having, having really good eyes and 
um, being really disciplined and, and knowing your assignment. Um, and that's kind of how defense is, right? It doesn't really matter what you put in front of them. Is is they're going to present what they present. And if we can beat it, we can beat it. If we can't, then we'll call something else. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever it is. So um, it's kind of cool how the game works and just it all boils down to just alignment, assignment, uh, having good good you know, good eyes, good reads, and being able to go make plays whenever they present themselves. So – all that being said, if I go back two years ago with Josh Heupel's offense, yeah. you guys scored 38 points, and in the season opener, you scored 59 last year. So all that being said, you can watch it a lot, but that doesn't mean you're going to stop it. Right, sure. Yeah, I mean, like that's how it has always been is there's – you know, you watch the film and it's, like, oh, yeah, we got these guys figured out or we or- – we were going to try to scheme up this offense first, you know, versus this coverage or whatever. And they come out and they just flat out beat us. Right. That That's one part. And then there's also times whenever you go out there and, and they're not in the coverages that you thought they were going to be in. Right. If you're expecting cover two or quarters and, you know, zone all day and then they come out and they play man all day and there's one high safety. Now you've prepared for cover two. It's like, okay. Now, now what do we do? You know what I mean? Like how do we make in game adjustments? How do we, how do we adjust to kind of what they're giving us? Um, and I mean, I guess that's kind of how the defense works against us too. They come out with a plan prepared to try to stop what we do. Um, if it if it doesn't work, then they got to figure something else out, or else you get games like that where you kind of just runs away and you're scoring 59 points and you don't even really know how and don't know what happened and it just I uh, just can't keep up. But uh, obviously, that's kind of what we want. But I don't know. It's kind of interesting to see how how people prepare for us and the ways that they try to stop what we do. So. I'm sure it took a slight adjustment when Cooper Mays wasn't there, but now that you've had several practices, I guess uh, about 10 w- without him, um, you, you guys feel comfortable with, with where you are now? Cause that's, he's one of the players in, in the entire sec, if not beyond that people are kind of keeping an eye on to see when he may be back. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I'm a choice, right? I think that that's kind of part of how, how we play is just, man, the next man up, you got to be ready. And, and the way that these next men up prepare is, is just as important as the way that Cooper prepares. Right. Because uh, obviously if, if say our backup running backs or, or whatever, that's not necessarily a good one, but if the backup corner is not paying attention in meetings because he's like, Oh, well, you know, this guy is just going to get the start. You never know. Right. You got to always be ready. And so uh, something we pride ourselves on and obviously our centers will be ready to rock and roll and, and should be just fine, man. I, I'm truly confident in, in kind of what we got going on right now. Yeah, it was it's funny you say that because I at first and I asked Cooper about this before he actually got injured. I said I thought that he was the most important player on the team because there were significant backups at other positions and that was a fun debatable topic. I didn't know that he was going to get uh actually injured uh 3 days later, so bad timing by me. Right. But um it, it's it's I think it's interesting how you talk about next man, man up and that mentality. And you guys have been blessed with good health, but by the same token, if you want to say Hendon for Joe Milton, or I could name several other examples, you have had that mentality. And for the most part, the guy that stepped in has, has done every bit as well as the guy ahead of him. Yeah. I mean, you look last year, right. When the guys like, like said, right. Cedric Tillman, unfortunately was not able to play as much as he wanted to last year. And then you see guys like Ramel Keaton step up and Ramel Keaton, like not a lot of people knew his name. People knew who he was. Right. But, that guy went out and made so many plays last year just because he's been preparing the same way that said has been preparing this whole entire time. Right. And Romel was still a part of it, even when said was here, but really got that shine whenever it was him out there at the, at the white house position. But then the guys like Brew too showing up, like just being consistent guys like squirrel, squirrel white in the bowl game when Jalen Hyatt doesn't play squirrel white shows up and has a big game. Like that's just how ball is, right? Like we're all competitors. We're all out there just trying to be the best that we can be. And when you get your opportunity and your name's called, it's time to go play. Last thing I got for you, your first day when you walked on campus to be a part of a practice or let's say a part of a practice or it could be a team function in which you guys are maybe going through individual drills on your own. Mm-hmm. What, when when was that? What, what what month and year? Take me back. First January, showed up. January. Uh, uh, it's like winter conditioning would have started January 2018. Okay. January 2018. What's this roster look like January 2018 compared to August 2023? How different? Pick one word. I'm putting you on, see, putting you on the spot there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like the roster, 
I know you're not looking for this. It's kind of a corny just media answer, but um, I think this team plays the one word is together. I think this this team plays this roster is very intertwined and very um, re- like reliant on each other, right? And I think we all understand that we all trust each other a lot. Um, just something that I feel like I've seen develop in this team the past few years is just uh, our ability to trust each other and our ability to, you know, understand that you know my job will not go unless my buddy's job, you know, unless he's doing his job. Um, had so much talent on that roster in 2018. When like in every single year that I've been here, have truly had a lot, a lot of talent. I mean, you look at guys in the league, right? When at one point our wide receiver room had Jawan Jennings, Marquez Callaway, like Josh Palmer, all these guys, said Tillman, all these guys that are in the league, right, and playing in the NFL that are all in the same room at one time. And it, it's kind of, um, you know, not a lot of people think like talk about it or think about it, but you know, we've had talent all over the place. It's just a matter of. Uh, the way that this talent kind of fuses together and, and forms one whole. And I think that's kind of where we've got to right now. Okay, one word talent level, January 2021, when Josh Heupel took over, uh, as far as talent and depth and dudes that can play, how, is the roster drastically different than yeah. now? Yeah, it is different. And and we lost a lot of guys. I think maybe depleted would be the right word for, for that roster whenever Coach Hype got here, just because – you know, you lose a lot of guys when something like that happens and, and not necessarily that you want to, right, but the people that aren't bought into to kind of what we got going on, like they made a decision to, to move on and to go other places and, man, truly like happy for them and, and wish them the best. And a lot of them have had success other places, but um, the people that stayed are, are truly committed to this thing and, and you can tell for sure. Yep. Check out cctis.com. The link is below cctis.com. Dr. Campbell's Cunningham, Taylor, and Han. Dr. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Han local. And they have your best vision at heart, is what they've got. And they're local. They'll take care of you, whether it's LASIK or whether it's uh, cataract surgery or one of the many eye vision centers for just your regular office checkup so check them out it is campbell cunningham taylor and Han. for jacob warren i'm dave hooker this has been a presentation of off the hook sports